welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We have got Bishop Connedy here today. This is Coffee with CEF. It is our breakfast meeting. So if you've got some coffee, tea, kombucha, cider, water, yeah, feel free to have a drink. This morning, we are all on a virtual field trip to Bishop Connedy, Our Lady of Loretto High School, which is near central Los Angeles. We have Andrea Janoff, who is the principal. We have the vice principal, Jacqueline Lucero. Development director, Diane Peckham. Uh, we have a teacher, English teacher, Vanessa Poe. And two students, we have Brianna and Jeanette. We also wanna say welcome, Rob. We have a Rob, he's on our board. So thank you for coming today. And we have uh, Catherine from Archdiocese of Los Angeles. We have lots of representatives from ADLA and from Bishop Connedy. For any of you who are new to the Catholic Education Foundation, we provide tuition awards to thousands of students every year. And that's thanks to the support of our donors. And we hope that this virtual field trip to Bishop Connedy, Our Lady of Loretto High School can help provide just a glimpse into what is happening in our Catholic schools right now and the lives of our community. We wanna help you get to know the students and families that we serve. And we're gonna be back on Wednesdays every week at 10 a.m. with guests from throughout the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Last week, we went over to Bell Gardens where we met uh, Peggy Weber, the principal of St. Gertrude the Great Catholic School and Father Nabor Rios. And they talked a bit about how they're serving their community and meeting their basic needs through the free and reduced lunch program and their feeding program through St. Vincent de Paul. And so without further ado, I'm excited to welcome our guests from Bishop Connedy. Bishop Connedy is a, con a comprehensive college preparatory Catholic high school that prepares young women for success in the 21st century. And I'd like to ask each of our guests to introduce themselves. And please tell us if you've got uh, some coffee, just let us know what's in your cup. Andrea, could you start off? Hi, I'm Andrea Jenoff. I'm the principal at Bishop Connedy, Our Lady of Loretto, and I do have coffee. So, Ms. Lucero, could you introduce yourself? My name is Jacqueline Lucero. I'm vice principal at Bishop Connedy, Our Lady of Loretto High School. Diane. Hi, how are you? Good morning. I'm Diane Techham. I am the development director at Bishop Connerty, Our Lady of Loretto. And I have a nice drip coffee that I'm having here with a little Love Light Earth mug. Uh, Ms. Poe, Vanessa Poe. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Vanessa Poe. I'm an English teacher at Bishop Connerty. And I do have coffee in my favorite mug that has all of Shakespeare's best insults on it. It is my favorite mug. <laughs> Brianna. Good morning. Um, my name is Brianna Gomez. I'm a senior at Bishop Connedy, Our Lady of Loretto High School. And in my mug, I just have some ice water. And it's in a little hug mug. <laughs> oh, I love it. And Jeanette. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Jenna Marroquin, and I am currently junior at Bishop Connedy, Our Lady Loretto. And in my mug, I have a cup of ice cold water. Nice. Well, welcome everybody. I've just, I've got my, uh, my cat mug this morning, drinking my coffee. I've got some questions for all of our guests this morning. I'm going to start out with Brianna and Je Jeanette. You are our guests of honor this morning. Can you start out by telling us about the transition to remote learning and what your day looks like? And Brianna, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, so for me, I would say personally, the transition for remote learning has been really smooth. And I would say that's all thanks to our teachers, because without them, um, they've just been so understanding, supportive, especially during this time. Um, and my day looks like, uh, so I have, we have block schedule, and it's uh, three classes per day. But except on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have two of my college courses. One is in the morning, um, Communications 101, and one in the afternoon, American Sign Language. And so I've just been, you know, going on Zoom, uh, meeting with my teachers, and we've just been uh, doing collaborating group work projects and also interactive activities. It's, and I've really enjoyed it so far. All right. And Jeanette? Hi. Um, so remote learning has been really amazing. I think back to what Brianna was saying, it's all thanks to the amazing teachers at Bishop Connedy and all the staff. At first, I was um, nervous when they announced at school that we were doing remote learning because I was 
nervous how I was going to be able to adjust to the new transition into our new um, normal in our everyday life. But back to what I was saying, the teachers have been amazing and the school really provided us with all the necessities we needed to make this transition really smooth. And it's pretty much to me like going to ordinary school without like being face to face with everyone. It, it has been really amazing because the teachers are just there supporting us and in our everyday classes when we have questions or something like at school we would have tutorings every day after school and the teachers still are able to make time for their students during break or lunch or even when all our classes are done um like a type of tutoring so we could get on the call with them and they'll be able to help us with our homework or any questions we have and my day usually consists of waking up like at seven o'clock and um, eating breakfast and then starting my day off. And from eight to um, two o'clock, I'm doing my classes and usually after, um, I'm just doing homework or like researching colleges or anything in between. And usually um, my days are kind of transitioning from one another because I have different classes. Like on, on Mondays, I have my normal classes um, and Tuesdays is when I have all my APs and then my honors and I take a college class during the day, which is political science. And sometimes during lunch, I have um, student council meetings with Brianna as well. You're busy and sounds like you're keeping very busy. So Brianna, how do you keep up with your friends socially right now? It sounds like you're doing a lot of work at school. How's your social life going? Yes, so everything has been going well. We've just been FaceTiming one another. And whenever we FaceTime, we just talk about each, we inform each other about how our day has been because um, it does, it can get overwhelming. But once we talk over it with our friends, like we, it just like reassurance. It's like very reassurance. And uh, besides talking to one another, we also sometimes bake. So this past weekend, we um, baked a couple of oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. And that was really nice. It was fun. <laughs> Sounds really nice. And uh, Jeanette, how are you doing with your friends? What do you guys do together? Um, I try to keep in contact with my friends um, every day. I usually FaceTime, FaceTime my friends every day after all my classes. And we just like to catch up with one another and we tell each other how our day went or like how classes were, what homework we have. And we usually, when we're FaceTiming, we do like a Zoom call and we'll like watch movies with each other. And also I have a really close friend that when like I need help with anything, I like, I will FaceTime her. She'll always help me like with homework or I'll help her with any homework questions she needs. That's really great. It sounds like that you're really supporting each other through this, that you're really helping each other get through all of this. And now the big questions, Brianna, so you're a senior. Yes. Have you made any decisions for next year? What are your plans? Yes, so I have committed myself to Mount St. Mary's University. Um, I've got accepted into their pre-nursing fast track uh, program. So I'm very excited for that next chapter in my life to begin. And those of you who are from out of town and might not be familiar, Mount St. Mary's is a women's college and their mission has been to educate the daughters of Los Angeles. So it's really, it's really awesome that you're going to be going and studying nursing. Why, what um, prompted you to study nursing? What inspired you for that? Yes. Um, so I've just, ever since I was little, I can always recall um, having such a passion with little ones. So I've like, um, my, both my mom and my aunt, um, they both are in the nursing field. Um, they're caregivers. And so watching them as I would grow up and seeing how compassionate and help, like they just want to have that, they have that passion to help others has inspired me to do the same. And so I hope to become a labor and delivery nurse um, in the near future, yes. Are your mom and your aunt working now? Yes, they currently are working. They are working at this nursing facility. And so what has been happening is that they've been, uh, they've been tested. Well, thankfully, um, they've been tested negative. And so what the nursing facility is doing is they're just separating um, the patients who have preconditions to uh, COVID-19 or, um, or have experiencing symptoms, and they've been separating them from the facility. So everyone in the facility is um, virus-free. I was Jeanette, where what are you where do you plan to apply next year? What are your what are your hopes for college and career? Um next year I plan to apply to USC and UCLA and hopefully if I were to get admitted to the colleges, I would want to 
major in um, criminology because one day I want to be a criminal justice lawyer. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. Typically, this time of year is filled with milestones for high school seniors. What are the plans for graduation at Conady and some of the other commencement events? So would you like me to start? I would um, love it if you could start. Okay. Thank you. So I am not willing to give up graduation and baccalaureate at this point in time because I think it's such an important um, milestone for our students and it's something they'll always remember. So I ask them to have patience and to my knowledge at this point in time, we are going to have it as an evening ceremony in July. So hopefully by then this will all open up. If not, maybe we will have a just immediate family. We do graduate outside. And so it's, um, that's pretty special for us at this point in time. Our seniors have lost grad night, as you know, because graduation is closed. Uh, we are going to do a streamed awards assembly for our students that will be coming up. And special things for our seniors, we're doing yard signs for them. And then we are going to have, um, after the awards as assembly, we're going to have a drive-by where our parents and students can come and they'll get their cap and gowns, their um, yearbooks, their awards, and their teachers will be there to cheer them on. So a little bit different than our normal, but uh, those are things that we are planning and uh, hopefully giving our seniors a very special send off. That sounds amazing. Speaking to all of the changes in recent events, I wanted to ask Jackie a question. Ja Ms. Lucero, uh, what are some of the other challenges that you faced throughout the COVID-19 crisis and the transition to distance learning? Uh, I would say that my biggest challenge has been the inability to connect with my students. Um, that personal connection is very important to me. Um, it's something that I really, really miss. Um, not having my students, not being able to talk to my teachers, not being there for my parents who uh, were always just so wonderful to me and who were always walking into the office just to say hi or ask questions. Um, it is one of the, I would say, biggest challenges I've had to encounter during this time. Um, seeing them face to face is so much different than on the phone or emailing them to answer their questions. So not being on campus, seeing everyone's faces is uh, my biggest challenge. Vanessa, Mrs. Ms. Poe, um, as a teacher, how do you, how are you engaging with your students remotely and how do you provide support for students who may be struggling? Um, that, that is definitely the challenge, um, both of those areas. First of all, engaging with the students. Um, I will say that I really have to give a lot of the credit to the students. Um, our transition was seamless. Uh, we, the, everyone showed up, everyone was in. I think we all, uh, students and teachers kind of made an agreement that we were going to be patient with one another um, we were going to try our best and and for me just remaining open to communication they can contact me anytime um, and then on top of that how to there so much happens in the classroom um, so energy is transferred uh, body language i mean so many things happen um, that help facilitate the learning process that we just don't have in this space. Um, so that is very challenging. Fortunately for us, uh, the Archdiocese immediately provided us with some webinar instruction through Catapult Learning to brainstorm, to share resources, to go over lesson plans that allowed us to use um, technology to, to allow the, the, the students to interact in live time. Um, we can work on shared documents and shared virtual spaces. Um, so they're being active throughout the class. It's, um, I'm also able to monitor it. Um, and so I think that that's one of the ways that we've been able to encourage engagement and to keep the students at least actively participating in whatever the lesson is. 
I do have several students that have that need extra support and that was definitely a concern. So aside from emailing them separately and saying, um, please contact me, stay in communication with me. Zoom has a feature of the chat box that you can chat privately. And then that's what I often do during the class is I will chat privately to students that I know may have certain questions or need extra support um, and we can communicate back and forth while the class is taking place over in a different area. Um, so that's been very helpful. Technology has been on our side uh, regarding that. Um, and then I just really have to throw it back to the students. They have amazed me um, at their commitment, their dedication, and their enthusiasm. Um, so, it, you know, it's made my job all the more easier that we have uh, students who are, I think also, you know, they're craving uh, contact and, and wanting to be in touch with one another. So that has definitely helped us as well. Thank you. I've got a question from the audience. Um, it's going to probably be for Andrea, Jacqueline, um, and Diane, if you want to chime in. This is from um, Jeannie, who she was, she went to an all-female high school and college, uh, but now the college has been co-ed for 18 years. Do you have any issues attracting students to a women's high school? Um, she says she values her all-women's education. How does that go um, in terms of recruiting and enrollment at your school? Oh, I'll begin and everyone can pitch in. Our enrollment is very strong. We are on an upward trend. Um, we currently have the incoming freshman class. We have 105 paid registrations, which is, which is really good. Our outgoing senior class is 61 and the other classes stair-step all the way up. This year's freshman class, I think, is 102. So we are moving in a very positive direction. And um, if I could, well, first of all, I think the atmosphere is great, but it is at all of the Catholic high schools, I think. The level of instruction is superb. Our college acceptance rate, um, but I think the main thing that is drawing our students is the dual credit program, which we have college classes on our campus. In the past three years, we've had 46 college classes on our campus. So our girls are able to get college credit and high school credit. Mm -hmm. This coming year, we will have the first a few that will get an AA degree at the same time as they graduate. So we're very proud of that program. And I think that is a big draw also for our students. But we have that, but we also have support programs, fantastic support programs for young people that are academically challenged. Um, so I'll let everybody else pick up a little bit off of that. Maybe Ms. Lucetto could talk about how many special ed students we have and how we serve those. Um. I will talk about that, but I also want to say that I am a product of an all-girls school. Uh, I am an alum of Bishop Conity, Our Lady of Loretto, so um, I definitely am a big advocate for uh, all-female education. I actually think it's very empowering for young girls to be in an all-girls setting. Uh, it definitely gives us confidence. It gives us um, the ability and the power to move on to higher education and be um, confident about ourselves. So I agree with Andrea that besides all of the programs that we have to offer, um, we also serve um, students with um, special uh, education learning needs, if we want to call it. Um, and we have a student support specialist who is our academic dean, who um, is there to ensure that all of our students are successful. She makes sure that all of our students' need, uh, needs are met. And so we are very grateful and blessed to have her with us because um, she is the person that works directly with these students one-on-one -on -one to ensure their success. And I wanted to just highlight, too two things that is amazing that you have the uh resources for special education um and students with learning difficulties and differences because that is very unique for a catholic school not all catholic schools are able to offer that that's awesome and also 
about the uh, college courses that are available to students. Brianna, I, you told me yesterday some of the courses you're taking. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your course load? Yeah, so um, as of right now for the spring semester, I, I'm taking um, six high school courses and then along with two college courses each semester. So as of right now, I'm taking Communications 101 and um, American Sign Language 2. And um, Jeanette, how, what is your course load like? Um, so my day, well, my, sorry, my courses consist of six um, classes and one college class this semester, and that college class is political science, but I have taken several other um, college classes. Last semester, I was able to take Administrations of Justice 101 and um, Psychology. That's awesome. Good job, girl. And got another question from the audience. May is Mental Awareness Month. Uh, what does your school do for students for mental health awareness? Do you have any programs for uh, mental and emotional health? Uh, yes, we do. We are connected with CPLA, which are the Counseling Partners of LA. Uh, we are very lucky that they have continued to uh, work closely with our students through telehealth. Um, all of the students who were seeing counselors prior to um, the Safe Red Home Guidance were still able to connect with their counselors. They have been very um, good about connecting with me to make sure that um, they have proper emails or phone numbers if there's a problem with communication. So I definitely know that these girls are being uh, helped and served and any need that they have, not only is a counselor available, but uh, our teachers are excellent. And our girls know that the teachers are there to help them. So if there's any need, any question, any concern, um, I know that the girls um, will get the help that they need. So how has it been with your own families, being the principal, president, teacher, dean, cafeteria worker, janitor, facilities manager of your own home school and uh, balancing that with your role as an administrator and a teacher at Bishop Connedy. Vanessa? Um, well, I think I, I'm very grateful. First of all, both of my children also attend Catholic schools um, in the Los Angeles area. They're a little bit older. My daughter is in junior high and my son is a freshman in high school. And, um, they've been kept very busy. Their schools have, I, I've been completely um, so proud of Catholic education. Um, I have friends who are teachers in the public school system. They're not, they're not able, they're not having any um, contact with their students. Um, it's a much different kind of feel, whereas I know that I feel so confident that I have to be away from my own children in the home. I can hear them. Um, but and they're set up doing their courses, but they're being taken care of by their teachers and their administration from their schools um, really much in the same way that then I am able to give to my students. So for me, it's worked out really well and they are both very independent. Um, so my son is rather annoyed with me if I ask him any questions, so <laughs> I leave him alone. <laughs> um, um, so I've been very, very fortunate and I really do credit that to Catholic education, the, the same love and attention and um, sort of prayerful guidance that I'm able to give my students, I know my children are getting as well. So for me, it's been very, I've been very blessed. I've been very lucky. And Ms. Lucero? Uh, <laughs> just like this morning, as we saw, we got disconnected. Um, the challenge I've had with having a child at home uh, going to school at the same time that I'm trying to work uh, has been the internet. Um, so <laughs> I was trying to log in. I thought everything was great. I did my sound check. I thought, okay, I'm fine. And right in the middle, I get a connection problem. And it's because my junior in high school is also trying to join his class and do his school work. Um, so that has been a little bit challenging, internet. Um, other than that, because we have all day to do things, um, I'm able to, to work at my own pace 
in my own schedule. Um, I can still be a mom and take care of my children. I can still do my work. I can still contact parents and email teachers and continue to do that. So the great thing about this for me has been just the flexibility of still being able to uh, accomplish all the things I need to accomplish. Well, a question from the audience for Jackie. Did um, This is for Catherine Frazier. Catherine is my colleague and Archdiocese Development. Did um, your school already have an iPad program? And how did you deal with students who did not have a dedicated household computer or reliable internet access at home? Okay, so we were lucky this year. We did receive a grant, a C3 grant. So this year we actually um, did get iPads for our students. I believe we got 220, and Andrea can correct me on the exact number. Um, but we did have um, iPads available to the girls. Uh, the transition to remote learning was very, very quick and very, very smooth. Uh, and so what we did was um, anyone who did not have an iPad, we immediately um, created a contract for them and we had the girls sign it and every girl who needed a device was able to take one home um, and use the iPads provided by the school. A few more questions from the audience. Um, this one is for Brianna and um, Jeanette. Are your rooms always that clean? That is a real <laughs> question. I just got it here. Well, I'm. a lot of people might call me a clean freak. I love to, things to be organized, tidy, and neat. Um, so yes, my room always tends to be clean and organized. Um, because I don't know, it just, I think of it whenever you have a clean room, you have a clean thought and mind. So, um, yes, my room is always clean. <laughs> I actually also, in fact, like having a clean room. I wake up like extra early to clean up and tidy up my room because I feel like if my room is not clean, I can't function and focus in class. And also, I feel like I am a clean freak, so I have to have my space clean just to work and have like a clear space of mind. That's really good. That is, that is, those are some very healthy practices. If you know, I have a virtual background, so nobody can see what my room looks like right now, but I digress. Good job, girls. And um, Brianna, um, is the sweater you're wearing, is that a varsity sweater? Are you, are you an athlete? I'm not an athlete. This is actually our senior cardigan. And so today I decided to wear it because it's just an extra way, like an excuse to wear it one more time before the year ends. Um, so yes, this is our senior cardigan and I have my pins and um, we have our patches of the extra, the clubs, extracurricular activities we're in. And so um, just decided to wear it today for this um, Coffee with CEO. And Jeanette, are you involved in any um, athletics or extracurricular programs? I'm, I am not involved in, it, in it, athletics, but I am in extra clubs. I am in student council. Currently, I'm junior class president. I am in National Honor Society. I am also Black Student Union treasurer. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, I have another question from the audience. I guess this is kind of a follow-up to what I was just asking about all your activities and everything you're doing. For the administrator, administrators, how, how do you ensure that your students are practicing self-care? And then I want to hear from you girls of how you do practice your own self-care. How do we ensure our students are practicing self-care? I think by setting the example for the students. Uh, I, too, am a very uh, neat freak. I'm very organized. So I think um, we have to model what we want our students to practice. So uh, I've always considered myself a great role model. So I hope that that is transferring over to the girls. And um, by what Brianna and Jeanette have expressed, I think we are doing a great job being role models for the girls. Brianna, what do you do? What do you do to practice self-care? Yes. Um, so all of my uniform, they all go to the cleaner. Um, <laughs> my my mom and my aunt, they always, you know, they instilled in me to always look presentable no matter where we are and so I know like Mrs. Sarah was saying um, we always uh, want to look presentable because um, there's a lot of uh, and special guests that arrive at our school 
So we always want to be presentable whenever we have guests at our school. Yeah, we have a question um, from the audience about connectivity at home, and that would be um, that would be you know have to do with the C3 program it's through the archdiocese. Can you tell us a little bit, um, Jackie, about the iPads that um, are given to the schools from C3 and how those work? So the iPads, uh, I believe, were donated by Sprint. And so all iPads, and I'm using one of those iPads right now, all iPads have their own internet connection, I believe through Sprint. Um, and so, that is the way the students who do not have access to internet are able to connect and which is why we also asked even if you have a device do you have internet access at home because the students who did it were able to get the ipad so that they can have um, the internet connection along with the device c3 has been really instrumental for the archdiocesan elementary schools and high schools to make sure that all uh, families have, have access to the internet in order to complete their schoolwork and communicate with their teachers. I have got a question for Andrea and Diane. What is your community need right now? We have a lot of people on this call who are really dedicated to Catholic schools. What is it that you and your young women and the families need right now? Um, first of all, I want to let you know that our student population, our families are very low income in general. And so uh, many of our families have been very, very affected by the whole coronavirus thing with their employment. And so we're trying to work with them to home payments or whatever needs to be done to help our families at this point in time and to help our students. Just going back for a second, we've checked out over 80 iPads. So I think that that's really important for our student population um, to have checked out that amount of iPads for students that do not have the device or did not have the internet at home. So it kind of puts it in perspective for you. Um, the other things that I think that we're looking for right now is in order to reopen, there's a lot of preparation that needs to happen. Um, we need more disinfectant. We're running out of disinfectant for everything. Masks, we're going to need. I would love to have some sort of testing device, which would be very, very helpful. Um, gloves. By the time our students come back, all of these things are going to be needed because girls notoriously forget their things or lose their things. So we have to be prepared to hand them a mask if they need it. Uh, so basically, those are the kind of things. But most of all, I think all of our schools and all of our communities need your care and your prayers. What are Bishop Connedy's needs? in normal times for funding and how has that been affected now? As Andrea said, our um, families are disproportionately um, economically disenfranchised. We serve congressional districts that, are, that have the largest poverty levels in the United States. And through a myriad of um, things, such as the archdiocese themselves, uh, wonderful foundations and individuals and alumni, students' financial assistance needs, um, we've been able to meet them to date it, with great hardship to the operational budget as well. You know, um, So tuition assistance is always gonna be needed. And but it, as Andrea pointed out, it's needed much more now because so many of our families are on that end of the economic ladder that have been hit the hardest. And we want everybody to be able to come back next year. And we know that we're going to need financial assistance, more financial assistance to do that. Jackie, um, Vanessa, do you have anything to add about what your community needs? As Andrea said, I, we always need prayers. Uh, the power of prayer is 
something that cannot be, um, it, it's just so powerful. So prayers, um, more collaboration uh, with the community, um, as I mentioned earlier, the um, inability to connect with each other personally is, is, I believe, affecting so many people. So opportunities like the one you're providing right now, where so many of us can engage and interact, even if it is virtually, is very, very important. So more, of, more opportunities to engage with our community. And Vanessa, do you have anything you'd like to add? I think that, I, I think it just, yes to all of the above and um, as we come back into whatever our new normal reality is going to be i think that um, patience is is needed <laughs> um, and uh, like jackie said real collaboration on every level so that we know uh, what the risks are how to manage risk how to be the best um, role models and provide safety and assurance to our students. And that's gonna take uh, the, the entire community, the, the entire diocesan community. Um, I don't think any one school is on their own in this matter. So we really, uh, I think for more opportunities like this, one of the things that has come out of this um, is are the webinars that we've been able to do with, others, with other teachers, with other, um, um, schools, and I hope that that continues through this process so that we can share resources, so that we can come together as a community and brainstorm. That's where creativity really sparks, and I think if we're going to become stronger out of this, we need uh, that creativity, um, and so prayers and patience and collaboration is what we need. Thank you for that, you guys. I wanted to thank just to thank everybody who joined us today from Bishop Connedy, Our Lady of Throne. Thank you for allowing us to take a virtual field trip into your school. Um, Brana, congratulations on your graduation that's coming up. And Jeanette, best of luck on your AP tests and your finals. We are all looking forward to hearing where you decide to go next year. Um, and Brianna, we are looking forward to hearing how it goes for you at Mount St. Mary's. I'm very excited about our two guests that we're going to have next week. They, they are from the parish and school St. Elizabeth of Hungary in Altadena. It's Dr. Phyllis Kramer and Deacon Doug Kramer. She is the principal and he is the deacon of the parish. And we're going to learn about how they, uh, about their community and how they've adapted to their new normal with distance learning and learning more about this parish and school and how they're meeting the needs of their families. As always, I wanted to thank you all for your support. I do see a few members of our marathon team and I'm sorry, I should have recognized you before. Vanessa, Jackie, you have run the marathon for CEF. Thank you, Martin, also marathon runner for CEF, big fundraisers, Karina. Um, sorry, if you are also a marathon runner and I didn't, oh, I'm sorry, Johnny, Johnny did too, Sandra did too. If I missed you, I apologize. Thank you so much for all of you who not only are dedicating, you're dedicating your lives to Catholic schools as teachers and administrators, but also uh, as fundraisers for your schools as well. So thank you. Thank you all of you for all your support. Just coming here during this time is hugely supportive to the CEF community and the Bishop Connedy community. Right now, COVID-19 obviously doesn't mean that class is canceled. Jeanette and Brianna can attest to that. They're still taking their six or eight high school classes and adding on their college classes and getting ready for graduation and going to their student council meetings and they're, you know, and they're very happy because we've allowed them to skip class for an hour right now out of their mornings. But this crisis does mean that school's fundraising activities and special events and major gatherings had to be postponed or canceled. And many families are out of work and facing extreme hardship. If you can give right now, please visit our website, cefdn.org, and 100% of your donation to CEF will support tuition award. We also have a link on there for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles' uh, COVID-19 fund, which 
is a fund that has been set up to go to schools and parishes that are severely adversely affected by this crisis. And if you would like to learn more about Bishop Conady, Our Lady of Loretto High School, you can visit them at bishopconadyloretto.org. I said next week we'll have Dr. Phyllis Kramer and Deacon Doug Kramer, and you can RSVP at cefbn.org slash coffee with CEF. I would like to now um, turn it over to Brianna and Jeanette. Could you lead us in a closing prayer this morning? Absolutely. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us a new day and letting us be present with all of you today. Please continue to bless us all during these challenging times and extend your hand, Lord, onto all those who are affected by COVID-19. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession be with all board members of the Catholic Education Foundation as they continue to inspire, assist, and support the Catholic education. Bishop Connolly, pray for us. Our Lady of Loretto, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, girls. Best of luck with the end of your school year. And if you have any questions about Bishop Conde, you can always direct them to Johnny and we can reach out to the administrators and the students at Bishop Conde for you. So thank you so much for coming. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.